The Prime Wars trilogy may have had a rocky start and an abysmal finish, but let's be honest, the Legends lineup was on point throughout the entire trilogy. Some of them were a little disappointing, but we really didn't get any that were truly terrible. Even Battle Trap was still pretty solid considering what he was having to do. And I still stand by the fact that Shockwave here is the best Legends Transformer that Hasbro has ever produced. The colours, the transformation, the articulation is utterly brilliant. The alt mode actually forms a convincing spaceship instead of just a gun turned upside down, although it is primarily to be used as a gun. So the question is, what's the repaint potential of Shockwave like? Because Shockwave is a very unique character. I mean, they could always do Astro Magnum, but I guess back then they weren't as bold as they are now. And I guess that was reflected from the Transformers Collectors Club, but let's be honest, they don't count because of their ridiculous prices. So I guess the only person you could really repaint Shockwave into was Shockwave. And we did get two variants of the mold, one from Takara and one also from Hasbro. From Takara, it was your pretty standard affair going for a tune accurate aesthetic and I guess it does it all right. But there are problems with going too tune accurate, which I will get into. And then in one of the box sets, supposed to represent G2 Bruticus, who's right over there at the time, we got Action Master Shockwave, who was a bit of a weird one. As a matter of fact, when I went to order D2 Bruticus, I just wanted the Shockwave, so I paid 20 bucks for the Shockwave, and they sent me the whole bloody Bruticus. So I got G2 Bruticus for 20 bucks. Still, as weird as it is, let's discuss which one of these is truly better, the prim and proper, or the weird and wacky? So right off the bat, you may notice I have made a few mod- well, just one tiny modification on my Action Master slash G2 Shockwave. Well, this right here is a Shapeways element that is designed to be compatible with the Perfect Effect upgrade kit, since the way that the handle works on the regular edition doesn't clip onto that, unfortunately. Fortunately, if you fix this up, it does work mostly. There are a couple of bits here that you need to that I kind of modify to make it work better because it was a knockoff black piece version for the uh, G2 Bruticus. But I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, I'll have I fading in and fading out of it, so it should work quite well. But taking these figures on their own, yeah, they're good. They are good, but compared to the original, they just don't really cut it. So in order of release, we have the Takara Legends version. And it's very hard to get across on camera here, but this purple looks hella weird. It looks great on camera. It's beautifully photogenic, but in person it looks like he's wearing pajamas. And the weird part is that they've painted a lot of it to make it look really, really cool and look really premium, but they didn't really have to. The paint that they used also has this weird matte finish that makes it look like pajamas even more. The grey's also a little bit flatter to the original, I'll just bring in the original, which is just a little bit shinier, although it's not really showing up on camera. Some people might say it's they're identical, but no, this is a much flatter and slightly darker shade of grey, and it's not as good. In general, this just doesn't feel as interesting overall. For starters, they've added silver at the front here to be G1 cartoon accurate, when here we have the luscious, luscious, transparent pink plastic. And like, yeah, the paint applications are exactly the same on the two, I'm not really sure why they've got the premium feel on this mode, but hey, I guess that's for vehicle mode, hey, they've even got the same tapograph there. Still, I just think the darker purple and the transparent pink works much better. Tune accurate Shockwave has never really looked cool. That being said, the Action Master Shockwave version right here, although he never transformed as an Action Master, does look really nice. The dark red plastic does wonders for the design. Yes, there's no clear plastic anymore, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. It's all been swapped out for regular purple plastic, but hey, means the plastic will be sturdier. I still think this guy is a viable option, even, even without this bit here. If you're just going to get the G2 Bruticus set and haven't you getting the Shockwave, yes, he works as a good stand-in for Shockwave. He really looks nice in this mode. Of course, comparing the three guns, th there really is no contest. The uh, regular Shockwave is still the best of the three, hands down, although... This guy is kind of good, he is kind of good. Size-wise, for the sake of consistency, because it's a bit hard to put this thing down flat, because the handle doesn't fold in properly, I'm just going to compare the sizes to these two with a standard Legion figure, a standard Legends figure, which is, of course, exactly the same size. It's the same size class. A standard Siege Micromaster, a not-so-standard Lego Mini figure, and Crumbs. 
And from here, I'm actually going to go through the transformation. I don't usually find the need to go over the transformation if I've already done it in a previous review, but the original Combiner Wars Shockwave review was done so long ago that I never actually showed the transformation because I didn't back then. Of course, I just want to go through the fact that you can actually flip that out to be used by certain regular Transformers and by all Combiner hands. I, I don't know if they work on the Power of the Primes ones, but they do work normally there. First thing you want to do is get the legs in order, which is by separating these. You'll notice that they have the Figma type hips, which you push up like that, and it does allow for some great posing later on. Rotate these forward so you've got the hollow parts out like that, and then you come around and bring the feet in like that. Oh no, hollowness! Ah, he does get leg light piping though. You then come up over here and separate the arms. They just rotate down like that. There's a double hinge here and that extends like so, and like so. You then take that bit and rotate it like that, which will also rotate up the head, straighten out the peg, and then that collapses into the backpack to make a nice shockwave. The downside about the Shapeways kit is that it'll never be truly flush against the back of the body, but it's fine. Unfortunately, you can't actually get that off once it's on. It's on so tight that it truly clamps around everything, and that's it. It'll be on there for all eternity, but whatever, it does what it does. And now we have our two new shockwaves right here, the last two of the sets, although not counting Reflector because he goes for ridiculous aftermarket prices, but you can just get the Siege version instead. Yeah, um, again, this guy's lovely, this guy's just kind of eh. I get what they're going for, they're trying to make the chest look a little better. And yes, whilst they've kept the uh, chest paint applications for the silver the same, the chest here looks kind of better, but it doesn't make as much of a statement. And I mean, for the price tag, it's not really worth it. They've also got some silver on the sides here, which is supposed to mimic the G1 toy. Y yeah, a, a nice touch, but still. I'm really disappointed about the yellow eye over there, it's really coming across a bit washed out. They haven't really painted it as such. They're going from much lighter yellow to the retail version. I still appreciate that they've kept the uh, transparent hands because that's not how it was in the cartoon. It was like that in the cartoon and they've painted that over. So at least we get that, but still, transparent hands are cool. I don't know why they got rid of that. But this guy, oh lordy, he looks lovely. Still not as good as the retail version because he's got no paint on the legs whatsoever, but still, Really, really lovely. The way they've done the chest actually goes away from the traditional stylings, so it does something new, and the red plastic just really, really brings it to life. Still, bringing in the original here, yeah, you can't win against a classic. It just looks way better in general. I'm not saying you have to 100% get this over these two. If you absolutely like Pajama Man, then sure, fine. I mean, it also comes with Cancer. Yes, that's actually the name of the Titan Master that it comes with, but I've lost... Actually, wait, no, I have not lost him. Let me just grab Cancer for a second there. Hooray, I have Cancer! And in terms of his comparisons to Crash Bash, he is definitely painted better in this mode. And the head is comparable, but they do, they do have some nice blue parts here, but hey, that's a freebie with Pajama Man Shockwave, hooray! Of course, Action Master Shockwave doesn't come with anything except the other five members of the Combiner team, but still, this guy's still the best, I find. I think this shot's actually showcasing the darker silver that they've got on there as opposed to that, but hey, at least neither of them are Games Workshop Grey, which would be a ruddy nightmare. Now, I could skip the articulation segment if I really so desired, but the video where I last reviewed these well, it's ancient, and I don't want anyone to go back and watch it. You've got a ball-jointed head that gets some really nice expressiveness here. Hinges that get to go up, which is lovely, and ball joints here. Ball joints at the elbow. I do wish you could have gotten a double-jointed hinge by letting this go further. I think if you sand this section down, you might be able to get just a little bit more posability, but for I, I could be wrong about that. I'm not willing to do such a modification myself. If you activate these hip sections, you can get some extra posability out of there, but I don't really use it very often. Hips work unhampered in all directions with the full thigh swivel and the full extreme knee thanks to the hollowness there and you get a little bit of a toe bend there. All in all, fantastically posable figure. Probably one of the most posable figures in the Legends line that Hasbro has ever done. But those colors aren't that great. If you really want to get one of these two, you gotta get this guy. But if you really want to get one of these three, then I still recommend 
the Legend Scale one, which I think goes for pretty cheap, because now we've got a Siege version that everyone just uses as a Voyager stand-in. I still don't get why people completely write this off just because of the size. It's a bloody good toy, and a bloody good desk toy, and I still really enjoy it. Now, since we had Pajama Shockwave for Vehicle Mode, now let's have Action Master Shockwave for the Robot Mode for size comparisons. Here he is next to a standard Legion, a standard Legends, and I'm starting to realise that this Legends figure is actually bigger than most Legends figures, so I'm kind of regretting that, but whatever. A standard Siege Micromaster, a not-so-standard Lego minifigure, and Crumbs, both in very weird colour schemes. My thoughts about the Takara Legends Shockwave are pretty much the same thoughts that I have about the first edition of the Takara Masterpiece Shockwave, as well as the Takara Legends Galvatron. This purple looks really good on camera, but in person it looks like he's wearing bloody pyjamas. It doesn't work. There are some figures that work really well on camera, and don't look good in person. And in the opposite direction, there are some figures that look really good in person, but don't look good on camera. And to be honest, the latter is what I prefer, because if you're going to be messing around with a figure or displaying it on a shelf, it needs to look good in said circumstances. And this purple that thankfully they've stopped using, probably because of a brand unification, it just makes the former happen. It's still a bloody good figure, and if someone handed it to me for free, I'd still take it, but in general, the retail version just has better colouring anyway. That being said, wow! Seriously was not expecting to like this Shockwave that much. Really the only version I bought him was to create the camera mode, but once I realised how terrible the camera mode was, I just gave up and gave him this bulbous thing at the back to work in the combined mode. And yeah, you really don't need the sh camera mode. He works great on his own, and he works even better in the Boudicca set. The red does surprisingly good things for the figure, and the orange paint in there brings the sculpt together immensely. This is the true successor to the Shockwave mold that we've all desired. But that being said, you can't beat the classics, and I'd still recommend this over these two. So tomorrow we're going back to the full reviews, and I know it's only been one video since the last full review, but hey, it's just the way things kind of happen this year. And we're going to discuss, once again, just how good the Robots in Disguise Legion lineup truly was, with a four-pack. See you then.